There are two things I want to point about about this question, which is why I selected it. Okay. The first thing is you notice uh, this polynomial. It's kind of been written in a bit of a weird way, in a strange way, right? Remember some of our language here, right? Which of these terms? There are three terms to choose from. Which of these terms is the most important term in this polynomial on the left hand side? The, the most important term is the 3x cubed, right? In fact, uh, it's so important we give it that special name, starts with an L, do you remember? It's called the leading term, it's got the degree attached to it. The leading term is usually um, at the front, like a leader usually is, right? So this polynomial has actually been written backwards, okay? And this is kind of important to us. We need to write the polynomial in the proper order in exactly the same way that if I said, okay, when you do 5,000 and you divide by 7, right, you don't just put the numbers 5, 0, 0, and 0 in any order you like, right? Like you're going to get something quite different if you divide by this, okay? So the order of the numbers is sort of significant. And in that, the same way, we're going to do that over here. So I'm going to rewrite this first as equals, and I'm going to pop it in the right order. This is actually what I want, okay? But the second thing I want to point out is, and um, this is why I gave you this example before, see how we're dividing 5,000 by 7, okay? So there are these zeros here, okay? A zero is a funny number, like even the symbol itself, most cultures use a very similar symbol for zero. Like, it means it's a circle around nothing, right? Like that's actually what the symbol is, in exactly the same way that the symbol for division means you've got two things and you're literally dividing them, okay? People didn't make me make up these symbols just randomly, okay? Now, being that there's nothing there, when there's nothing there, we usually write nothing. For example, you have a look at this polynomial. How many x terms are there in the dividend? Answer, there aren't any, so we don't write them, okay? That's, that's pretty normal. Uh, there are no x to the fours either, or x to the fives, so I just haven't written them, okay? But, as you can see, when we went through this process, like, you look back at your working, right? These zeros are actually critically important. They form part of my working. Like, for starters, I need the 5 and the 0 in order to do the very first division, right? So therefore, even though there isn't a 0x here, I kind of need to put it in, in the same way that I have the zeros here for my hundreds and tens and units, okay? So I'm going to rewrite one more time with the missing terms in there, okay? Or there's only one in this case. So I've got 3x cubed minus x squared, and I'm just going down, I'm looking at the powers, I'm making sure I don't miss any, okay? So there's a 0x missing in here, plus 11. And for however many terms that are missing, for instance, if what I were dividing were this, 3x cubed plus 11, right, I've got two terms missing in the middle there, the x squared and the x, right? So I would rewrite that as 3x cubed plus that many x squareds, and that many x's, and there's my 11 hanging out on the end, okay? So wherever terms are missing, you actually have to include them in the same way that you include them in a number, okay? Now that I've written it like this, now we're ready to divide, okay? So let's just give this a crack. And now that we've gone through this introductory example, I wonder if we can do this a little bit quicker. So here we go. <clears throat> I've got my x plus two, my divisor out the front, and here comes the dividend, right? There we go. How do I begin? Tell me what's, uh, somebody hasn't said anything yet. We've got an example just now. What will be my first step? Say it again. 3x squared. What, what is 3x squared? It's how many times x goes into this, right? So 3x squared up here. What do I do with that? Multiply, Multiply out the front. So I get 3x cubed plus 6x squared. Happy? Yeah. Okay, do the subtraction. Minus x squared, take away 6x squared. It's, it's, it's even more negative, so negative 7x squared. And then, a bit weird, but I've got this 0x that, that comes down, right? So plus 0x. Yep. What do I do with this minus 7x squared? What am I going to think about? By x. Yeah, divide by x. How many x's do I fit in there? And the answer is minus 7x of them. Multiply back down. And that gives me this. Okay, now here's where this zero comes into play, right? I do zero, and then I take away minus 14x from zero. So what happens to that negative? It, um, it's a double negative, so it becomes positive. So this is zero plus 14x. So 
there you go. Okay. So in some ways, it doesn't behave differently, but it needs to be there because otherwise, you'd be comparing like x terms with numbers, and that doesn't quite work out. That's why we've got all these columns happening. Okay. Almost finished. What do I do next? Okay, I'm going to add 14. Up there. Okay. Multiply it back one last time. 14x plus 28. What's my remainder? Negative 17. Very good. Okay, so there is my answer. Okay. And again, just like I have here, I could rewrite this. I could say that b polynomial I started with at the front, um, 3x cubed minus x squared plus 11. It's equal to x plus 2 times that, take away 17, and I'm finished. Okay. This question, in some ways, like because this is the focus of this lesson, um, the real guts of the question is that we simply do this, this long division process, right? So that's what we're trying to master at the moment. But if you look carefully at the way question 3 is phrased, they're asking a subtly different question. And in fact, question 3, it's, it's really good that this is the last question in this set, because that's where the next sets are heading. This is kind of the more important question, more important than just can you divide? Can you just tell me an answer? It's about what can you do with that answer? Okay, so it says, show that 2x minus 1, I just got a d for divisor because I'm going to divide by that in a second. Show that 2x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial and express that polynomial as a product. Okay, so if you think back to when we were doing quadratics, you remember quadratics? It was like a lot of effort was invested in can you factorize this thing? We learned how to factorize by pairing, we learned how to factorize by completing the square, we learned how to factorize by quadratic formula, right? Factorizing it is a, is a really important problem because it yields a lot of insight. So that's where we're heading. We want to get this thing factorized in terms of this. Okay. Now, in fact, because you guys have done quadratics, you can probably see what the factors are if you sort of push at this a little bit. Okay. But when you've got cubics or quartics or quintics or anything beyond power two, then you really need this division process. And that's why we're mastering it. Okay. So let's do the division. Let's set it up. I've got my dividend underneath the division sign. Okay. Here's my divisor over on the left. Okay. And what I want to point out to you particularly, this is part of why I like this question, <clears throat> is that the divisor is no longer monic, right? Do you see? I'm, I've very frequently been having something out here where that leading coefficient is one. It's like x plus two or x minus one or blah blah blah. Um, that makes things easier. Out here I have a 2 now, so I just need to take that into account. It's not any harder, you just keep this extra process in your mind. So how many times does 2x go into 8x squared? When I divide this by this, what do I get? The answer is 4x, right? 4x. I know that because when I choose to multiply back, I'm supposed to get exactly the same thing under here. 4x times 2x is going to be 8x squared. Okay, if it's not the same, then I know I've chosen the wrong thing to go into my quotient. All right, I need to multiply it by this as well. So 4x times negative 1 is minus 4x. Okay. And doing my subtraction now. Okay, I do 10, take away negative 4. Take away negative. Double negative. You get a lot of double negatives happening here. So this is going to become 14x, right? 14x. Then take away 7 comes for the right. Okay, again, I ask my question, how many times does not x, but 2x, how many times does 2x fit in here? And the answer is seven. seven times. Seven times. I multiply back, which gives me seven times 2x is 14x, seven times negative one is negative seven, and I do my subtraction, I end up with zero, okay? Um, because negative seven take away negative seven. Anything take away itself is zero. So there's my remainder. Okay, so I've proven it, there you go. If it's a factor, there's no remainder. That's what it means for something to be a factor. When I did this, I ended up with a remainder hanging out at the end. So 7 is not a factor of 5,000. Here I do have a remainder of 0. So x, 2x minus 1 is a factor. So let me rewrite this, right? Therefore, uh, 8x squared plus 10x take away 7 is, and the factorization is just the product of those two guys, right? Uh, 2x minus 1, 4x plus 7, which you could have worked out if you did the quadratic formula or if you, um, you thought about how to divide up this 10x, etc. Okay. 